for the excretory system. The excretory system is dealing with things like kidney beans. Well, either kidney beans or your own kidneys that you have. And what we're trying to do is filter blood. Keep the good stuff in our body and get the, rid of the bad stuff which basically comes in terms of this concept called homeostasis. Homeostasis is keeping everything at its optimal level. So you're not too hot, but you're not too cold. You don't have too much blood sugar. You don't have too little blood sugar. You, got, you don't have too much energy. You don't have too little energy. Again, all these things, it's our steady state. It's our optimal level. Not too much, not too little, just right in the middle. Our cells make waste constantly. They're do t always doing different chemical reactions and there's waste products to those chemical reactions. Well, just like anything else, if we have too much waste, we need to get rid of the waste. The, probably the biggest culprit is breaking down proteins and nucleic acids. We make nitrogenous waste where we have a nitrogen and a couple hydrogens that are attached to something else. Okay, it's called an amino group. We got to get rid of those because those can be pretty bad news. The reason that it can be pretty bad news is because it usually makes ammonia, which is NH3. NH3 is very toxic. That means it can kill you. Um, not only will it kill you, but it is also carcinogenic, which means it causes cancer. And that's not necessarily a good thing now, is it? It's very soluble, which means it can jump uh, from membrane to membrane pretty easily, or it can go from this cell to that cell to that cell, and it can quickly move throughout your body and throughout different tissues. And we gotta dilute it and get rid of it as quick as we can. We do that a few different ways. But we, meaning humans, aren't the only ones that have to deal with nitrogenous waste. This cute little guy here, as a uh, he's got to get rid of, he makes, as a mammal, he, he makes nitrogenous waste as well. Uh, all aquatic animals, they need to get rid of nitrogenous waste. They just have a straight ammonia. Uh, they have some other things to deal with it that we don't have. We turn our nitrogenous waste into urea and birds make uric acid. But the point here is all of these animals still have to deal with proteins and amino acids getting broken down and dealing with this nitrogenous waste and nucleic acids like such as dna and rna getting broken down into amino groups again got to get rid of the nitrogenous waste the nitrogenous waste uh, for us we deal with like we said before urea urea is less less toxic but what we do is we take this nitrogen and combine it with some carbon dioxide to make urea it happens in the liver um, and in quotes here, we are killing two birds with one stone. Um, so carbon dioxide can be toxic. Our amino groups can be toxic as well. So we're killing them with one stone. And ask me about that later. It's kind of funny if you're a, a science geek. At any rate, all of this happens in our kidney. Our kidney is our main functional unit of the excretory system. It is our functional organ. It's what happens. It does all the filtering. It takes the goods, it filters solutes out of the blood, but it filters solutes full stop. What do I mean by a solute is a solute is anything that's dissolved into something else. Okay, so here we're talking about stuff that stuff, solutes, that's dissolved in blood. Our kidneys are going to reabsorb the good stuff, okay? And it's going to excrete or get rid of all of the bad stuff. Inside of our kidneys, like we said, its job is to filter the good stuff from the bad stuff, okay? Absorb all the good stuff, get rid of all of the bad stuff. Our kidneys in and of themselves are here and here. Are from our kidneys, the bad, the good, sorry, so our blood will come in through these arteries to either this kidney or come through this artery to this kidney, okay? 
it'll filter out, our kidneys are made up of these things right here called nephrons. So here's one nephron and here's another nephron uh, combined with our collecting duct here. So here's a nephron, here's a nephron, a million of those nephrons make up our kidneys. These guys will filter all of the blood. The good stuff is gonna go back into this vein here. So it goes back into the vein to the vena cava, back to the heart. The bad stuff will go on the collecting duct and eventually make it to this tube right here, which is a ureter, or this tube right here that's a ureter. The ureters will empty into here, which is the urinary bladder, and then our urine will be, here's a fun word for you, micturate out through the urethra. So that's the big picture. So here's a nephron up close and personal up close and personal. It is the functional unit of the kidney. We have, a, our kidneys are made up of a million different nephrons. Its job is to filter stuff out of the blood. So here, this red one, here, let me get a red pen here. The blood is gonna come in through an artery and an arteriole and then go inside of this structure right here that's part of the nephron, okay, called the Bowman's capsule. And inside you see a whole bunch of capillaries knotted up. That big bunch of capillaries knotted up in there is called the glomerulus. The glomerulus. It's just a whole bunch of capillaries inside of the Bowman's capsule. Okay, so then things are going to diffuse from the capillaries into the Bowman's capsule. And then in the Bowman's capsule, you see we have these things that kind of loops around, but I want you to mainly pay attention to this big loop right here. Okay, this big loop right here. That big loop is the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle. The loop of Henle is where really the nephron does all of its sorting. All of the good solutes, the things that our body still needs, are going to diffuse from the loop of Henle back into the capillaries. And from the capillaries, then this blood will move back into a vein and go back to the heart. So that's for the good stuff. The bad stuff is going to continue on the loop of Henle and eventually make it way, its way over here into the collecting duct. The collecting duct will eventually make it to a ureter that we'll talk about in a moment. So, big picture, all the blood comes in through an artery into the Bowman's, or sorry, <clears throat> into the glomerulus, the capillaries inside of the Bowman's capsule. Diffuse from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule, now we're in the nephron. Continue on the nephron through the loop of Henle. Good stuff in the loop of Henle goes back into the capillaries and goes into a vein back to the heart. The bad stuff continues on the loop of Henle and ends up in a collecting duct. And from the collecting duct will end up in a ureter. So interaction between here, we got interactions and exchanges between the circulatory system and the excretory system. Here in the glomerulus, that ball of capillaries inside of the Bowman's capsule, and then also capillaries over here surrounding the loop of Henle. Then our excretory system, obviously, it's gonna go in and then come back out. Lots of different places for interactions. Again, the nephron's job is to filter things. Um, whether Here's a good look at the Bowman's capsule that's part of the nephron. And then here's this ball of capillaries called the glomerulus that's part of the circulatory system. Here's a key piece. High blood pressure in the kidneys is what forces everything in to the Bowman's capsule, i.e. the nephron, okay, and solutes out of the blood vessel. 
So it forces everything in. That's the key piece. So if we don't have a high enough blood pressure, then our blood never gets filtered. Also, small things are going to get filtered. Large things like cells and large proteins, they do not get filtered. So like we mentioned before, reabsorption or that we get the good things back in the loop of Henle. So here, the good things will go back into the bloodstream at the loop of Henle. Bad stuff will continue on and make its way to the collecting duct. Okay. After the bad stuff has gone past the loop of Henle and will make its way into the collecting duct, from the collecting duct, everything will end up in a ureter. So, in summary, cells and proteins that are too, blood, too big remain in the blood. They are not filtered. Things that are reabsorbed, meaning it goes a loop of Henle and then back to the blood. Things like sodium, chlorine, water, amino acids, glucose, which is a sugar. Things that are excreted, which will be things that end up in the collecting duct, urea, too much water, toxins, drugs, anything that our body doesn't know about, too much sugar, too much salt, all of those things will be excreted. So high blood osmolarity level, basically, do we have enough water or do we not have enough water? Okay, too much, too many solutes in the blood is going to lead to dehydration because if we have too much solutes, we want to dilute it so our water will keep going in and in and in and in and in, in, in uh, and stay in our body. This stimulates thirst, right? We need to drink more and, and get rid of it, which means now we're going to release ADH from the pituitary gland. ADH stands for anti-diuretic hormone. The job of ADH is to bring water back from the nephron, from the loop of Henle, back into the bloodstream, back into the circulatory system. It's a key piece because if we don't have ADH, water stays in the kidneys. If it stays in the kidneys, it's going to end up in the collecting duct, to the ureter, urinary bladder, and released out of our body through the urethra. That's not good. We want to keep that water. We don't want to lose all of our water. We need to keep it. Okay. So ADH increases the reabsorption of the water in the kidneys um, and increases our water absorption back into the body and we decrease urination. Again, if that's we have a high blood osmolarity level, too many solutes in our blood. There is a little bit of an issue with ADH. Okay. Caffeine and alcohol change the shape of ADH, specifically it blocks ADH. So if the structure of ADH is changed, can ADH do its job? No, if proteins are changed, they can't do their job anymore. Or hormones are changed, they can't do their job. So if ADH is blocked, can't do its job, okay? Remember, ADH is supposed to bring water back to the body, back into the bloodstream. So if ADH, if ADH is blocked, it can't do that, then water keeps going out of our body. Some people that drink a lot of coffee or whatever product that's going to block ADH drink a lot of coffee and they say, look, I'll, all I have to do is drink coffee and I'm still hydrated. My urine is clear. No. Your urine's clear is because the caffeine blocked the ADH and the water is now forced out of your body. So the ADH can't do its job and bring it back. You need to drink a glass of water because you're dehydrated from drinking all the coffee. So here's the big picture. Here we got our renal artery, the artery that's going to bring blood from the heart, away from the heart, and to the kidneys. So blood enters the excretory system through the renal artery as it goes through. From the renal artery, the blood will go to one of the kidneys. So here's what we're saying. Blood's going to travel down the renal artery to either that kidney or that kidney. Then blood, again, here's, 
here's our renal artery, okay? Blood's gonna enter the, the glomerulus, this knot of capillaries, and diffuse, all the small things are gonna diffuse into the Bowman's capsule and make their way through the loop of Henle. The good stuff is gonna stay in the, from the loop of Henle, you're gonna diffuse back to the renal vein and make its way back to the vena cava at the heart. The bad stuff will continue on the loop of Henle and eventually make its way to the collecting duct, which is over here, right? There's probably be another nephron attached here for its waist and another nephron attached here for its waist and another nephron attached here for its waist. So this collecting duct is collecting all of the other nephrons waste. All that waste continues from the collecting duct until it hits the ureter. From the ureter, now we're here, from the ureter, the waste will travel through the ureter to the urinary bladder, from the ureter through the urinary bladder, and then hold until it's time for the bladder to be expelled or released, and the urine will go go out of the body through the urethra. There's a lot of terms here. I highly recommend you make sure to go back and have all of the terms upside down, backwards and forwards, and you know the pathway of, of things moving through the excretory system. And that's all she wrote. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.